What is up guys? Welcome back to yet another brand new Mage Ben gaming video. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day as always. As I said in yesterday's video, please do go down to the description and look at my Twitch because I'm streaming a little bit more often now and trying to play various different games on stream. So please do come check that out and support me there. Various other links to my kick and stuff as well. So I'd really appreciate it if you guys are interested to come watch me play some games. Just, just go, just go follow and, and stuff like that. But anyway, let's get into into the video today. I can't speak. Today's a similar one to yesterday. It's about Xbox. Xbox seems to be in the news so much at the moment. They are always the headline and always uh, having issues or problems, or at least people misconstrue things and create them into being issues. But we're talking about Phil Spencer's recent comment about how he's open to bringing stores like the Epic and itch.io to Xbox consoles. What this doesn't actually say here is he also did actually mention Steam as well. Um, but anyway doesn't matter it's still very 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 good news because this could be huge your steam library on pc could be carried across or your epic games library because i i have a few games on epic games because they give games away for free every month like you do on the consoles um epic games is the same thing so you actually get some of your games to be able to play on xbox hopefully this could be a real thing so let's talk about it historically exclusive games releases have been a powerful weapon in the console war C uh, customers are more apt to buy a certain piece of hardware if that's the only way they can get to play particular games that they want to play which is always a bad thing this is very anti-consumer like people so love like seem to love having exclusives on each platform now and it's like you actually have to buy that device to play that game if you just had what I, I've always said, if you have Xbox and PlayStation and PC and every game is on every platform, it's just a complete battle between whose hardware is better rather than what software is better. It'd be great to have a hardware battle where Microsoft and PlayStation are just competing to bring the best console for the price. Like that would be awesome because they're all going to play the same games anyway, right? That would be so cool. Same with Nintendo as well, but Nintendo will never happen, I don't think, or at least for way longer. In an interview with Polygon, Xbox boss Phil Spencer said Microsoft is now leaning away from that strategy to the point that he's even open to the idea of having digital storefronts like the Epic Games Store and itch.io on consoles, on Xbox consoles. It was a big deal earlier this year when rumors that Microsoft was planning to bring Xbox exclusive games to PlayStation first began to surface. It ultimately proved to be true, although only a small number of games. Personally, I think this is going to change drastically soon and none of the big ones are currently set to make the move. They will, guarantee it. But it really, in the end of the day, if he said he doesn't like exclusives and he thinks that every game should be everywhere, that he literally, he's telling you, he's telling you. Maybe, you know, he literally said in that presentation as well that they'll start with those and it'll be a test essentially. So, but it seems, yeah, but it see it really seems to set the tone for the future in a podcast confirming the Xbox to PlayStation pipeline. Spencer said that over the next five ten years, uh, console exclusive games are going to be smaller and smaller part of the games industry. Speaking to Polygon at GDC, Spencer said the shift is aimed to helping uh, helping to restore growth to the industry by making more games available to more people on more platforms. Something younger gamers tend to take for granted. This notion that Xbox can only be this one device that plugs into a television isn't something we see in the Gen Z research or Generation Z research, sorry. Spencer said because nothing else is like that for them. Some of them will have an iPhone, some will have an Android, but all the games and everything is the same. I can still get on TikTok on both of them, at least for now. It's very true. There are some platforms that lock things down on iOS and, and Android. I mean, there's a big war going on between iMessage and the fact that that's so restrictive to Android users and stuff, but it's another whole thing. All of their stuff is available wherever they want. So for Xbox, our brand pivot as we attract and maintain relevance with a younger audience is Xbox is a place where I can find the great games I want to. Now, just to speak on experience, uh, my girlfriend's brother is is like, uh, you know, much younger and part of the newer generation. This does not work. I can tell him that now from at least from a UK standpoint, this whole thing of attracting a younger audience by like releasing games everywhere is not working because every single one of the people in his friend group at his school and stuff are just on PlayStation because they have Spider-Man. So that just proves this whole thing that he's trying to say. I understand what he's trying to do, but sometimes I think these older business people like like this kind of thing, oh great, that, that's going to work. But all these 
the, all these guys at his school, in, in a, he's not young, he's like, you know, 18 or something, but I'm talking from the past few years when I've, when, you know, when he's been younger, every single one of them plays on PlayStation, they're in that friend group, they buy it because of, because of Spider-Man, maybe if Spider-Man was on Xbox, they'd maybe consider the Xbox, but I still don't think they would because party chat stuff, where their friends are, they are going to buy PlayStation because that's how the generation was won the previous time, but anyway, carry on. I'm not so sure that everything is the same as Spencer put it, crossplay is a fairly common feature these days, but I have an Android and my partner has an iPhone and that word is not high on the list of things they do well. On the console front, Nintendo is a completely walled garden and Sony has done pretty well for itself with PlayStation exclusives too. He does acknowledge that. Epic has been famously battling with Apple for years over the, uh, yeah, the, of course, of course the um, Fortnite stuff. So, what makes more sense to me is the idea of coming at the problem from the other direction by bringing other storefronts like EGS, so Epic Game Studio, or itch.io, or maybe even Steam to Xbox consoles, an idea Spencer said he's open to. Consider our history with, uh, with us as a Windows company, he said, nobody would blink twice if I said, hey, when you're using PC, you get to decide the type of experience you have by picking where to buy games. That's uh, there's real value in that and this sort of ties into if you didn't watch yesterday's video this very much times into uh, ties into phil spencer was literally trying to play fallout 76 on his asus rog ally and he could not carry across his save from xbox he'd have to repurchase the game on on the asus rog ally there's no way he wants to just boot up the xbox dashboard on his rog ally and play it and this kind of ties into it could we see the xbox store purchases carry across to steam could we see a partnership there that would be huge even if it's just a partnership at first for like the xbox exclusive games i find it very frustrating that personally i just prefer the steam store i don't like the windows store on pc so when i have games like forza horizon or or halo and i've bought it on xbox in the past i just rebuy it on steam because i don't want to use the microsoft store it's terrible and i'd much rather have all my services through steam so like gears 5 was on sale recently so i just rebought that on steam so it would have been great if those purchases that I had made in the past could have just been carried across to Steam anyway. Like I bought it by Microsoft, I've given Microsoft that money before, why can't I have that purchase on Steam? It makes no sense. So I see what he's saying here and it would be great if that was everything. Man, it, it, this, would, this would really bring their vision of play anywhere to the next level. Like I've just bought Dragon's Dogma on Steam. If I can now have that option to play it on console, like... This, this will just be insane. This would be brilliant. Like I can have my PC set up here. I've got my TV behind me where I can play the console version. I actually have my PC hooked up to my TV anyway. But if I was downstairs in my living room or something, I wanted to boot up Dragon's Dogma uh, and just be downstairs with my, my brand new puppies that I've got at home now. We've got two new puppies. Like... I could play the games downstairs without having to just not play games and spend time with them. I can actually be down there with them, which they like, and and play games down there, you know, to <laughs> carry on my saves. All this like progression stuff. Sorry, I forgot to put it back to full screen, but all this progression stuff that should just carry across to any device wherever you are. I fully agree with his vision here. I really like that. And I hope that's something we're going to get in the future because it's needed. Anyway, Spencer feels like he's more cautious. Uh, continuous part of gaming ecosystem as a whole when gaming on pc he said on consoles though my gaming is kind of sharded uh, to use a gaming term based on these different closed ecosystems i have to cross there are real practical reasons for microsoft wanting to move away from xbox exclusives phil spencer said that while pc and mobile gaming are growing the console market is not and subsidizing the cost of the console production in order to boost revenue through game sales isn't necessarily viable in the long run. He may also um, he may also be prompted to consider big changes like this because uh, because of uh, waning interest in Xbox consoles. A recent yeah, we know that this whole thing that's come out recently. Very true. I think that's all promising stuff to be honest. If Xbox has the ability to access more platforms and more games, more people are going to be inclined to use it. I think there's even a certain PC audience like myself who would actually use the Xbox. I have an Series X behind me right there with the Starfield wrap on it, but I barely use my Series X anymore because I've just gone full PC. But actually, I would use that Series X again if I could, like, 
cross compatible like saves and games like if i as i said dragon's dogma i put my series x downstairs i'd just carry on where i left off this would be huge much like steam with steam cloud saves and the steam deck like you could literally do that if i've been playing cuphead on pc and on console actually but i've been playing cuphead on pc to try and like do as many things as i can and then i, I can just carry on playing with cloud saves and uh be on my steam deck so that's it for this video but i think this is very promising as per usual people misconstrued this and turn it into a huge negative i understand when you see epic game store as a pc user everything's like you hate everything but I agree, I don't like the battle between Epic Games Store and Steam, the fact that Epic Games pays for exclusive PC games, it's like the whole thing that the, the PC brand is against, but this is a very different thing, this is about just having compatibility for those stores on the Series X, you still have the main Windows Store, you're going to have Steam, I guess, um, so if Epic Games Store is there as well, and you've got your free games every few months, or every month or whatever, then that's kind of huge. So anyway, thank you for watching, leave a like, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I'll see you in future videos. Bye-bye for now, guys.